Yo, what's up? It's Jimmy on from Glitchy Thumbs. Today we have character 1.3. I think it's in 1.3. Yeah, 1.3. <laughs> it's going to be the next character in this character set out of five. I've been having a lot of fun making these characters. Hopefully I find a character that I really like and build a cool game mechanic around it into a full game. And if you guys like one of these characters, just leave a comment and possibly I will just base my decision on making a game off that. Whoever is a fan favorite. We're going to create this character in Blender and go through my workflow process which is one blocking out two uv unwrap three texture paint four rigging with rigify and five animation let's get to the video all right to block out character 1.3 we need to shift the reference over i'm moving it to the right so that we can get the reference right in the middle where the cursor is normally you want your characters to be directly in the middle of blender at least that's what makes everything easier with all the axes all lined up let's drag this timeline down because we don't really need it right now we need as much screen real estate as possible let's start with our favorite a plane i'm starting to really like the plane very versatile because you can pretty much cut into it and make any character or object or thing you just have to be creative with it and be able to visualize what the shape is going to be what's going to be on top of your meshes how you plan to cut your uvs how you plan to texture all your meshes. I go to edit mode and extrude to the right. I did this in portions because of the same reason I mentioned in the previous video, I plan to pull the edges out. So it's easier to do it in portions or you can extrude all the way to the right and then just make loop cuts. Either way is fine. But the way I'm doing is in portions and just aligning with our reference. I extrude to the left. You can see we get this already nice rounded shape for the bottom of his face. Character 1.3 looks like a weird Hershey's kiss type of character that's how I would describe him or her it can go either way but that's what I'm thinking about when I'm looking at the character <laughs> I grab these vertices in the middle and the one on the next column. We can just pull these vertices up because we already have sort of the bottom shape that we're looking for. If you need more vertices, you can just subdivide by clicking two vertices and right clicking to subdivide. That's how you get this more rounded corner. I'm just going with the flow most of the time. All it is is aligning your vertices as best as you can. I subdivided towards the middle and made a cut with the knife tool so that I can extract extrude these vertices to the left to get character 1.3's antenna it looks like i was aligning as i go just so everything can be more precise and work on getting the shape correct early on so we don't have any issues i extrude another row for the antenna just do it in sections because each edge gives us a way to pull out the shape later on so that we can get that 3D feel to it. If you do this correctly, you won't have to make as much loop cuts and do any additional work later on. So that's why I'm being a little bit more strategic here, but you guys can do it however works for you. If you're watching the videos, you'll be able to compare the progress that I make on each characters and what I'm doing differently. My goal is just to try to improve on the timing that I take for these characters. If I see a solution that makes everything much faster, I'm going to implement that. That's going to help me in the long run because I'll be able to make characters way faster. Also, I'll have a folder full of characters to use. So at any moment, I could just pull them out to build some sort of mechanic or even expand upon a mechanic. I extrude the rest to finish off the antenna. You don't have to be super precise. Just try to get the idea across as much as you can. No one's really going to judge your creation. If they do, who really cares? This is something you wanted to work on and you wanted to see it through. So just go for it and don't listen to other people. I try my best to make certain edges aligned as possible. Possible. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. My thought process is it makes it easier for texture painting. The less messy your vertices and edges are, the less stretching you get when you apply your textures. That's super important here because I plan to possibly draw the nose and the mouth on the texture and we need those faces to be really aligned. I was in x-ray mode so I switch out of it with alt z and I switch back from flat to studio and texture to material so we get this more solid gray color which is easier to see and not as blinding as the white color and this is our final shape for the character I extrude it in the y-axis to pull it out just enough just visualize how thick you want the character and then delete the faces in the middle because we don't need that it's just extra faces that players won't see I did the quick origin here to get the origin in the middle i applied all transform to get the location back to zero the rotation back to zero and the scale back to one this should actually be done first before you do the quick origin i apply 
a mirror modifier, highlight everything, pressing A, so we can pull the right side closer to the mirrored left side. When I get a width that I like for the character, I go into x-ray mode and highlight these middle vertices. You want to be in x-ray mode because it grabs all the vertices in the front and also in the back because we're in a specific view. I turn clipping on and drag to the right and that connects both sides to each other. We have our 3D mesh of character 1.3. It already looks pretty cool as is but now we need to create the curvature by pulling out the edges. You can start with any edge. It really depends what's easier for you. I started in the middle here but then I started from the far left and just moved down each column to the right. That's just easier to remember because you're going to need to do this for all your characters. So you got to have some sort of process that you stick to. Otherwise, every time you get to this portion, you won't have a specific process that you follow. It's just easier to think about it as start from the left and move down each edge loop to the right. Or you can start from the far right and move down to the left, whichever is easier for you to remember. That's how I remembered it. The idea here is just to get your character to be more rounded. So all this is subjective. I can actually just stop here and just go with this shape right now, but it doesn't look right to me. That's why I'm slowly pulling out the edges and moving around just to see if this is what I want. I'm really not huge on being a perfectionist. I try to get the job done as much as possible. I try to get to a point where I say it's good enough to continue to the next process. I grabbed all these edges to pull them out all at the same time but i know now that when i do that it's still flat so it doesn't make sense to do that anymore but since these are old videos that's what i was thinking about at the time i'm trying to find the best solution for this and i still haven't found it i'll just continue to pull them out slowly each time i'll improve on this and it won't be an issue every time because i'm building muscle memory i'll just be doing it on autopilot which is normally the case with a lot of things that i do i practice a specific movement or technique over and over where my brain just automatically does it without me thinking most of the time it's kind of just a part of the process and you just do it however fast you do it is entirely up to you a lot of people want the perfect character i just want a character to be done that's the goal for the day usually just to finish your character get them into a mechanic play with it see if you like it if you don't leave it in your stash in case you might need those characters they can also be secondary characters as well if you need something to fill up some space in a game as decoration you could just pull out this character and have them animate in place people who really like you know play your game they'll know hey i've i've seen them make this character that's pretty cool too these could be like easter eggs this is kind of like my universe that i'm creating with a bunch of characters the only ones who really see them or understand the meaning behind them are you guys that actually watch the video even if you don't i really like these characters they're a part of my journey so they hold a special place in my heart each one plays a huge role in my development whether it's in drawing and procreate like how i came up with these characters or 3d modeling in blender or creating Creating cool prototypes in Buildbox. Every little thing that you do that helps you progress to your final dream or goal in life are important stepping stones to helping you get to where you want to go. That's the journey that I'm on right now with all these characters. We'll just see what happens when I see them all in front of me. They're almost like chess pieces in a chess game for me however i make certain moves on the board is up to me and that determines what happens for the entire game we won't know what will happen towards the end until i move all the pieces i leave you guys with that piece to inspire you to do what you want to do to get to the finish line and we're pretty much done blocking out character 1.3 this looks exactly like how i wanted it to create the eyes i move the cursor to that location and then i add a plane and scale it down since my concept has two different eyes you have to decide whether you're going to choose the left eye or the right eye i decided to choose the one on the left it just has a eye shape that i like we're going to use that i extrude to the right in columns similar to how we did the body i extrude to the left i make a loop cut i grab all of these top edges and then just drag them up and aligning each vertex as i go i kept that edge towards the middle because that's what made sense to me at the time i actually do this process a little bit different now that i'm looking at these videos you'll be able to see that in the future 
characters. When I look at these videos, I'm thinking this is actually very inefficient. During the time, I guess I thought this was the best way to extrude and then align back to back. Doesn't really make sense to just extrude first and then align everything towards the end. This is what happens when you record a whole bunch of videos and you have to refer back to them to remember the time that you were making these characters, which is what I'm doing now. It's kind of cool to see the progress though. You guys might not see it, but I see a lot of improvements that I've been making in my current character since these are old characters. I'm just eyeballing everything. Get it? <laughs> that was funny. You got to just go with the flow with everything. I'm making these loop cuts again so that I can pull them out later. Towards the left, I wanted to make both sides symmetric so that they look identical. But if I extruded it on the left, it just takes much more work to try to get it exactly the same as the right side. Hopefully, I just made my life easier by just deleting the left side and then mirroring the right side over, which makes more sense. But not too sure if I did that. I was probably just in my flow and just trying to make these eyes as quick as possible at the time if you ever need straight edges you can select all the edges and then scale them down and press zero normally the edges will just be straightened out you can see i'm aligning each edge loop evenly as possible it just makes the uvs a little bit more efficient to use during the texture process you don't have to worry about all these edges and vertexes all over the place in weird shapes again i could have just drew the eyes directly onto the mesh but sometimes it's just easier to create a separate object and then and fill that in so that's probably the reason here normally that's just easier for every character that you plan to work on is to have separate objects because you know you can texture each object its own color and not have to worry about being precise by drawing them in if you draw directly onto the mesh you have to consider that when the mesh gets animated the texture in front is going to deform with the mesh so if your character has eyes on it those eyes are going to actually move with the animation we're doing a similar thing here i remove these back faces we're not going to see them apply a quick origin and then apply all transforms add a mirror modifier pull them close together so that we can pull the edge loop in the middle i was trying to get the cursor to move towards the eye so it's easier to move around this is why you apply the quick origin after all transform now everything's easier to move with the arrows select the front edges and pull them out if you do everything with a plane this is going to be something that you're going to have to get used to you're going to have to pull out all the edges to create create curvature for each object so if this method doesn't work for you or if you dislike this most likely you should find a different method i kind of like this process i feel like i have more control over the shape of my character in the most simplest way when i'm recording these videos everything is a time lapse it might seem like it doesn't take that long but when you actually get hands-on you'll realize oh this actually takes a lot of time each time you do it you get one percent faster because you'll start noticing your own inefficiencies and and correcting it or at least i do i start noticing that i should do things more following a technique because you know exactly how long that technique takes to finish whatever you're doing and then when you find a better technique that cuts down all that time that improves your workflow that's when you replace it once you're finished with your shape move it to the collection you created i forgot to move these to a different collection i selected both of the planes named it character 1.3 renamed the back plane to body and the front plane to left eye i duplicated the eye and was trying to place it similar to my reference but that looks kind of weird because <laughs> eyes should be a little bit more symmetric the way i drew is probably a little bit odd so i kept it on the same level instead since i selected the eye already i just moved the cursor to the selection this way we can add a uv sphere to create the pupil because in the reference i have a pupil and i go into x-ray mode delete the back faces we don't need those faces it's just going to be hidden behind the eye object duplicate that to the left side actually i deleted that move that pupil to the left side deleted the duplicate joined the left eye with the uv sphere that we created and then duplicate it to the right side i went to object mirror on the x global because the eyes should be symmetric so they have to be opposite of each other that's the eyes i still see the back part of the uv sphere which isn't correct because we removed them since there's a mirror on the eyes i had to undo the left eye from the uv sphere and apply the mirror on the left eye first and then just select these back faces and delete them because we're not going to see them any Anyways, rename the uv sphere to left pupil move it to character 1.3 fold and then duplicate it mirror it on the x global and align it according to our body mesh 
since there is that middle line, we can actually align it to the body mesh, rename it right eye and right pupil so we don't get confused between the separate objects. It's always good to be organized when you have multiple objects in Blender. Everything's just going to have a default name like plane, sphere, and you just have to rename them as you go. These are the eyes for the character. Now that we're done with blocking out the character, we have the body and we have the eyes. Now we have to UV unwrap our meshes to get them ready for texturing so i click the uv editing tab and it brings us into this window where the texture is on the left on the right we have our 3d object so we can select which edges we're going to mark as seams that's where we're going to cut and since this blender file has all of our previous characters you'll see the texture for character 1.2 which is what we worked in the last video but if you haven't seen that video yet definitely check it out and let me know in the comments what you guys think in either video what i normally do is just create a new texture and call it character one underscore three underscore texture and click OK. And that'll get rid of the old texture. On the right side, I select the middle edge loop and I right click. If you don't see mark seams, it's because you're in vertex mode and you want to switch to edge mode, which is the number two on your keyboard. Vertex is number one, edge is number two, and faces is three on your keyboard. So I switch to edge mode. I mark the seam that I selected. As I was unwrapping the UV, I realized that it'd be much more efficient if the eye and the pupil were just one object each and then just mirror both of them to the right side or the left side, depending on which way you're looking at the screen. The reason why I thought about this, because it's easier for us to UV unwrap one of the eyes and one of the pupils. That saves us space on the texture because we'll just have one UV for both eyes. So I just mirror it to the right side and then I just duplicate the collection. In case I need to refer back to the mirrored version, I'll have a backup, which is always good to have. In case you mess up on your meshes, you can always go back to your backup. I applied the mirror for the body and then I forgot for the eyes and the pupil, I should move it closer to the body mesh. I completely skipped that portion because when you're looking at it from the front view, it looks correct. But now you have to go on the side view and make sure there's no empty space, which I forgot to do. But on the side view in x-ray mode, I select all these vertexes move the eyes as close as possible to the body so that we can shrink wrap the vertices i go to vertex groups create a group rename it to shrink wrap add the shrink wrap modifier and target the body and change the vertex group to our shrink wrap and now you can see there's no separation between the eye and the body so that's a technique that i use if you move the eye it will always stay connected that's the beauty of this modifier if i moved it all the way to the right to give it more width it will always stay connected and all of this just depending on how you want your or meshes to look at the end of the day. You could also do the same thing for the pupil, but I didn't. I kind of just dragged it in. There are hidden faces that I should have removed, but not really an issue at the moment. I deleted that extra backup because it doesn't have the shrink wrap that we applied. So I just reduplicated character 1.3 collection again. And now we can get back to unwrapping our UVs because everything's set up correctly now with less object. For the body, I selected everything, press U and clicked unwrap. The UVs show up on the left. I turn on UV sync selection to see which faces I'm selecting on the different islands. The one on the left is going to be the front UV. This is important because we're going to need to draw on the mesh for the nose and the mouth. So what I'm doing here is just reorganizing it, aligning it to match the 3D object and I mirror it to keep it aligned. I keep two separate UVs, one's for the front and one's for the back. I plan to draw on the texture for the front UVs. So that has to be separate from the texture on the back UVs. Otherwise, let's just say I drew a mouth, it would show up on the back and we don't want that. We just want it to be on the front. I made the back UVs smaller because it's just gonna be a solid color. So we can save room for other textures if we need to. The only thing I understand about UVs is the larger they are, the more high quality your textures can be on your meshes. That's why I kept the front bigger, but I haven't really AB tested that side by side with each other. Maybe I should do that that's actually a good idea one of these days i'll test between having a small uv map with let's just say like a mouth on it versus a big uv with a mouth on it just to see the difference be between the two now we move on to the eyes you can see the shape is different in edit mode because we have a shrink wrap and we didn't apply it yet it's not really an issue to apply the shrink wrap for a shape like this you can if you want to but then that just makes vertex not rounded i should also do a video on that too where i a b test 
against a mesh with the shrink wrap modifier and their UVs versus a 3D object with the shrink wrap modifier applied with the UVs. I'm thinking some pretty good content ideas and I'm just watching these videos. I rotate this to the side. I like to keep it aligned with my 3D object and that's entirely up to you how you want to do it. If you can recognize the different UVs, then it's not really an issue about aligning it. You can always click the faces in Blender and it'll always show you these on the left side. But if you edit your textures in a different program, such as Photoshop, you won't really know which UVs there are. There's no way to click into it. Once we have that, we move on to the pupils and I just clicked unwrap. We can just scale that down. That's about it for this character. We didn't need to do the other sides because the mirror modifier is on. So we only need to do one of the UVs. It'll apply to both. And that's probably a pretty good tip too for UV unwrapping is to have a mirror modifier on for duplicate objects. That way you save space on your textures because that UV will just grab the same texture from the same area for both objects. That's only if your texture is similar for the object. I'm organizing each UV. I switch to the previous character's texture file. Here's a pretty good example of how UVs work. If I move the pupil for character 1.3 to the texture to the bottom left where our pupil was for character 1.2, the UVs for character 1.3 will have the same texture for the pupil. We just need to scale it up. That makes our process much faster so we can reuse textures if we need to. So that's a pretty good tip. You can have one large texture file and all the UVs can grab from specific areas on the texture, whether it's a color, whether it's a design, the UVs will grab from that specific area. Right now I'm moving the rest of the UVs for character 1.3 to the right. If we really wanted to save space, we could do that. It's best to note this down somewhere so that you know, okay, this texture file is meant for both characters. So for me, I would probably write down like character one underscore two plus three texture or something like that, or just write it down into a spreadsheet and you'll know that texture is for both characters. Because if I had a lot of characters, it's going to be confusing to know which texture is for which. And that's why I kept the textures separate for the sake of the videos. That way we can just drag and drop the correct texture every time because then it's already following the naming convention that I've been using. So I know which character goes with which texture and that's how I separate between the two. For the sake of this video, this is a pretty good way to explain how UVs work in Blender and how it applies for all your games. Once we're finished with the UV unwrapping, what we do is click our object, apply the material. Since this Blender file already has a previous material, I'm just gonna reuse that. I click the eye, apply the material, click the pupil, apply the material. It's already using the character one underscore two texture. So that's why when you look at our mesh right now, he's all black because our UVs are in the black location and his eyes are the same as the eyes from character 1.2 because we placed the UVs on the bottom left and it's grabbing that texture and applying it on top of our 3D mesh. That's how UV maps and texturing works in Blender on 3D models. I click the body mesh, go into texture paint. The paint buck is already applied. Select the gray color and it fills in the gray on our texture you can see that area on the right was filled in because that's where our uv map was and i could just move that anywhere on the texture and it would just fill in however we want to paint it i select the eyes go on a texture paint click the white color and fill it in this looks a little creepy so i undid that and i filled it in again but i remember the eyes doesn't look the same as the reference so i go into x-ray mode just to look his pupil should actually just be all black so what we do is go into edit mode and select the lower left uvs that we placed over character 1.2's texture color. We move it to a different location. Since this is already black, this is pretty much what we wanted because that matches the reference more. I go into texture paint again for the body mesh. This time I use the texture draw tool and select the black color. You can go in x-ray mode to see where to draw. You can draw on both the texture itself, which is on the left or on the 3D mesh itself on the right. I'm not sure why I was making my life more difficult by drawing on the left because I can just outline the mesh on the right side and just follow the reference. Yeah, sometimes I'm in some sort of flow. And I do things incorrectly, but that just makes pretty good content for the videos because I can showcase different ways to do things in Blender. Right here, I'm in edit mode, selecting these specific faces because I just want to draw directly in those faces. I click that square button next to texture paint. I was trying to just draw directly in that space, but it wasn't working. Normally it does. 
because it probably had to do with the face orientation with the red and blues and I didn't flip them. That's why I was probably drawing on the left side on a texture because it was just easier. But now it just makes your life more difficult because it's not following the reference. So I have to kind of eyeball it. At any point, if I click undo too many times, I would probably lose all the textures because this file hasn't been saved. I'm just drawing the outline slowly. Th that way it's more accurate. And it's okay to not be perfect during this process. It's because I'm using a mouse. And of course, I'm not the best at drawing with a mouse. I'd rather take that texture and bring it into Procreate and then redraw it. Normally, this is just like a placeholder for me to know, okay, this is where the mouth is going to be. I just need to draw more precisely in a different program over this area. That's how we replace the different textures with better textures later on if we need to polish this character. For the prototyping phase or the beginning phase, just draw as messy as you need to just to get the concept and the idea across because you can always improve it. Nothing is set in stone. Just because it's ugly now doesn't mean it'll be ugly later. Things can always be improved upon, made way better if it needs to. It's actually pretty good content to showcase the progression that you made for each character. Not everyone starts out as professionals. We all kind of start out as a beginner or an amateur and then we progress and get better over time that's what's important these are pretty much my beginning characters you'll definitely see the progression if you continue to watch the videos which i appreciate that you guys do but even if you don't i'm still going to be progressing with my characters and trying to get better it's pretty cool to capture everything on video and be able to look back at oh wow i remember this character i remember how bad it was maybe in the future there might be a character that looks so good that's very similar to this character it's because it started with this character and i select the two faces in the middle because i want to draw the nose when you select those specific faces you can see on the left the uvs only show that specific area that's how you know okay that's where to draw and that's how you separate the two whatever you draw on the left side appears on the right side so simultaneously Simultaneously, you can draw on your texture on the left while also seeing being applied to your 3D mesh in real time on the right. And I found drawing each line separate and connecting it to be the best method for this. Just draw the outline first and then fill in the middle and then you can clean things up if you need to, which I did by clicking the gray color and just clearing the edges so that it's not so rough looking. But hey, it looks pretty dead on like the reference. That's all that really matters to me. As long as I got the concept across, I'm able to visualize it now more in my mind i can expand and think of other things for this character now now he's not only a 2d drawing and a sketch but he's also a 3d object where i can create some sort of experience with but that comes at a later time in the game development process it looks like i didn't save the texture because i have recordings of the character all black again which means i didn't save the textures and i had to redo everything over again so i filled it in with gray again so we already did the process i just need to repeat it filled in the eyes of white kept the pupil as black for the body mesh this time selected all three faces in the middle because i know that's where i'm going to draw the mouth and the nose i outline it slowly again because that's what we learned from the first try if you want to get it accurate again i think it's because of the face orientation that i didn't flip for the mesh that's why i couldn't draw directly on the mesh on the right side so i opted to just draw on the left side because i was trying to get this done quickly as possible filled it in with black Black. after i outlined it i used a lighter black or charcoal instead now finish with the triangle nose that's why aligning your uvs is important too is because if you're drawing on the texture like how i am it's easier to draw it if everything is aligned correctly otherwise you would have to draw like an upside down triangle or upside down mouth and that just makes everything difficult for you but also that's definitely going to take more time so i definitely could have aligned this a little bit better to make it easier for myself but probably wasn't thinking about it at the time just cleaning up these edges and boom character 1.3 looks good i forget his nickname what was it he was a chocolate kisses chocolate kisses face something like that i don't know maybe i didn't think about it yet i know i talked about chocolate kisses for sure this is what he looks like but he's just a chocolate kisses with a face definitely don't forget to save your texture which i didn't so you saw me retexturing it save as and you can see i added an extra three into this texture that way i know exactly what this texture is for and it keeps everything separate however you choose to do your naming conventions is entirely up to you i can always refer back to the videos to understand what this texture was or i can look at the texture and understand okay this is for character 1.2 and 1.3 so however you want to do it having a spreadsheet so that's a good tip have your names of your texture into maybe a spreadsheet and have a description to help you determine what this texture is for that just keeps everything organized 
you could even drop like a png of both characters into your spreadsheet that way you can just look at it and be able to tell from right away the only reason why i'm thinking about this is because if i had let's just say like a thousand characters or something there has to be a way to organize them so that i remember each and every one of them i mean i will remember them just by looking at it because i'm the one that drew them and i'm the one that created them and modeled them and stuff so i know what is what but if you end up passing this on to a team member it's going to look confusing to them and they won't know how to determine what character is which and which texture is going to be that's a good way to organize everything for future reference if you do plan to have teammates working on these files that just makes everyone's life easier and they just have to refer to your spreadsheet it's already explained in a nice orderly fashion that finishes our texture paint next in our workflow is rigging with rigify this is something i need to explain more detailly i don't think i, I probably did in the last video but probably do a better job this time around in case i did miss some things the way i'm getting all the hot keys and all my keyboard presses and mouse clicks on the screen is i'm using this add-on shortcut vur you just pretty much start it when you're working in blender if you're recording it just shows all the hot keys that i'm using to the bottom right you can also switch it to the left if you need to it also shows when i click the mouse that just makes it easier to refer to there are times where i'm not gonna say the hot keys and certain people need to know that to do certain things in blender so that's a tip actually here's a tip to help with your blender videos if you're making them for like youtube and stuff if i add a single bone and i go into edit mode click that bone and delete it on the right i scroll down just a little bit bring the sidebar out just a little bit so we can see a little bit better under rigify samples there's already preset bones that you can use for this character i added the basic spine under viewport display you can display the bones in front of our mesh that way it's easier to see i scaled it down moved it towards the middle and then i added a tentacle for his tentacle which is going to be that portion on his head and you got to be pretty creative with these bones especially if you have very odd characters with weird body shapes and body parts you just have to experiment with different bones and see what works with what you can create some sort of frankenstein skeleton that you can animate i'm adjusting to match the antenna for this character it's gonna be super simple we don't need a lot of bones we just need to have some sort of movement for his body or face area i select the end of the tentacle and shift select the spine and press ctrl p so that we can keep the offset making the tentacle a child of the spine which is the parent bone i guess that keeps it connected for blender to determine how the bones are connected with each other i still have to experiment with that and see the differences but i select the spine bone and I press M so I can move it to the first layer and then I select the tentacle and I move it to the fourth layer you can see it disappeared it's because that layer is not turned on we could do that in the rigify layer names you just add the rigify layers and then for rigify bone groups you just add the standard these different values already have a certain color to them that's how rigify separates each layer for us so we can determine which is what for animation later but we have to do the setting up first and it's easier to explain if we use less bones and then progress our way to more bones otherwise it's going to be a little bit confusing if you're a beginner at this which i was but i've been practicing with various different characters and i definitely understand how the process works a little bit better now for the spine bone there should be three layer names first one would be the spine main second one would be spine fk third one would be spine tweet these are all different things you can do with those bones for animation animation later on it's just how rigify worked for the four i called it hair main you can name your layer names whatever you want just as long as you understand what each one is the next one would be hair tweak and the spines would be on row one and then the hair will be on row two and then we will color coat them with the values above you could just pick any of these but it just makes sense to follow the naming conventions that they already have so i chose three special for spine main for the spine fk i chose five which is the fk for the spine tweak i chose four which is tweak they're going to be using the colors that you see above us. same thing for the hair main five for fk hair tweak four for tweak and you'll be able to understand what i'm talking about when i generate the rig you can also turn on the names for each of the bones oh and i forgot to turn on the tentacle bone you can do so right here by clicking 
that window button and those bones will appear again that's how you know those bones were applied to that layer when we were moving them if you want to rename your bones entirely up to you you can press fn and f2 and then just rename it named it hair followed the same naming convention you can keep it as bone if you need to but then that, that gets confusing later on when you have a lot of bones so it's good to just start practicing naming things and organizing early on so that if you do need to refer to it you'll know okay this bone is for that portion of the body etc for these i renamed it as spine i think the capitals doesn't really matter it's just all subjective however you want to do is however it makes sense some people want to have capitals some people want to have lowercase once you're finished you go into pose mode and you click that bone icon i should actually know the names of these buttons but sometimes i forget so bear with me when i re refer to it to the icon you want to scroll down here and double check what the rigify type is this bone is supposed to be a spine bone but it's under the basic copy which is incorrect normally it's just set to one of the bones so you just have to click the end of the bone to find out what rigify type it is and you can change the type if it wasn't correct this is supposed to be the basic spine not sure why it came out as the basic copy but that's okay the reason we have to do this in pose mode is because we have to now assign the different layers to the fk and the tweak so that's why i selected layer number three for the tweak and number two for the f i was in a good flow until there's a insufficient memory on my mac not sure why we click the last bone for the tentacle for the hair and we make sure the rigify type is tentacle we move the tweak layer to after the dot which is the fifth layer and then go back to edit mode just make sure everything is correct once we're done we go to object mode and that's how you'll see the generate rig button we click generate rig and you'll see it created this new rig for us you can check in front and i'll hide the reference i click the viewport shading change it from studio flat and material to texture so we can see our texture to apply the rig we select the body mesh and then shift select the rig press ctrl p and select the width automatic weight to move these layers you have to go into pose mode and then open up the sidebar and click item that's where our rig layers are going to be you can see all the names that we came up with shows up here all the spines are in the first row and the hair is in the second row and it's easily organized if you click them you can hide those specific layers for those bones we don't need the original bones anymore so you can just hide them on the right make sure to rename them correctly i think i mixed up the names the bones that we added were supposed to be the meta rig and the rig is supposed to be the one we generated so that was the mix up on the naming convention doesn't really matter as long as you know i grabbed the spine bone and I move it and you can see the eyes aren't moving with character 1.3 because our objects are still separated one way to have it move with the rig is to join all of our separate objects into one object but before we do that we need to apply all of our modifiers apply the mirror I think I'm adding the outline here so I go to vertex groups add outline click the plus button to add a material select our previous outline material add a mask modifier and a solidify modifier increase the offset to one check with normals check high quality normal material index offset is set to one change the thickness to whatever you like the shell vertex group set to outline vertex group set to outline it disappeared but if you move the solidify modifier above mass modifier you should be able to see the outline i'm not sure why i added it to the eye it should actually be on the body remember i talked about the face orientation i actually remembered it here and it's red it should actually be blue but i didn't flip those normal and then i realized the outline has to be a separate object so that's why i duplicated the eye called it outline but it's still not working with the eyes and i wasn't too sure why i was trying to troubleshoot this but this doesn't look like it was correct so i deleted that i guess i was trying to get an outline around the eyes but it wasn't working how i envisioned it. the next solution that i thought of was maybe to just outline it on the texture itself looking at this video this definitely wasn't a good solution that's just more tedious work that you don't really need to do you can see it's really hard to determine where to draw on the texture in viewport shading i switch back from flat studio and texture to material i'm trying to draw directly on the texture again yeah not a very good solution at the time it was definitely the face orientation i think that would have fixed everything it would have made everything easier to draw on the mesh so i went to edit mode expanded the viewport overlays and turned on 
face orientation and go to mesh normals flip if it's blue that's correct that's the way the normals should be and i did the same for the eyes select all the faces go to mesh normals flip if everything is blue that should be correct for the face orientation now if we go back into texture paint i should be able to draw directly onto the body mesh on the right side if you want the brush to be harder or softer you go to the fall off if you want it harder you select the far right icon that looks like a sideways bracket that would create a more harder brush and you can see uh, when i'm outlining the eye it comes out as dots it has to do with how you created your faces so you can see that area i didn't have an edge loop there but most likely it's drawing weird in that section i think think that's why but that's something i should also make a video about as well these are all good topics that i also need to understand the only way to do is if i make a video demonstrating the difference so i need to do that i noticed the shrink wrap wasn't applied correctly because you have this portion sticking out i tried to fix that everything that i'm doing now would be trying to perfect the character which should be saved for the polishing portion towards the end so this part is actually unnecessary because we're supposed to be focusing on rigging the character and less about painting the character but that's probably where my mind went this dotted looking outline definitely looks super ugly i don't even know why i consider that to be a solution now that the base orientation is flipped the process for outlining should work now so that's why i duplicated the eyes renamed it as outline double check that the outline had back face calling on and an emission added the mask modifier solidify modifier change the offset to one check flip normals uncheck even thickness check high quality normals material inset offset to one shell vertex group to outline in the mass vertex group to outline move the solidify modifier above the mass and you should be able to see the outline the outline is kind of interesting it shows the outline depending on the direction on the view of the character sometimes if you're facing directly in front you won't see the outline but when you're looking at it from a side view you can see the outline this depends on the 3d mesh like for this one it didn't really look good you can only see it on like a side view so that's pretty odd it's just better applied on the outside of the body mesh i was probably looking for something specific for character 1.3 again i'm not sure why this is in the rigging with rigify portion of the workflow probably because that's where my mind went toward sometimes when i'm working i'm supposed to stay on track but there's certain things that catch my attention and i end up getting distracted and trying to fix that problem first and then moving on to the next you can see i'm moving around the mesh and noticing all the things that i don't like and what i do like some reason the shrink wrap isn't correct like i noticed the issue right now because i'm watching the videos because i think we turned it off on the modifier that's why it's not working correctly the video looks like i didn't know that i was trying to fix that because on the body mesh you can see next to shrink wrap there's those three icons the third icon on the body mesh is highlighted but the one on the eye is slashed out that's because i probably turned it off and i forgot to turn it back on and i didn't notice that at the time it's always good to look back at your videos to understand what went wrong because now i actually see what i could have done and saved time but when you're actually hands-on and working you tend to forget certain things that you did and sometimes it's the most simplest solution and you just missed it that's gonna happen and that's why i'm recording these videos so i actually remember where i made mistakes and if i need to refer back to it i have an idea of which character i made that mistake on and which video i'm talking about that mistake so i can actually avoid it in the future or if i forget the solution that i came up with i can always refer back to this video and that helps out with the next character since i got back on track i was supposed to just join all the objects but i got sidetracked so i click the eye the outline the pupil and then click the body and click join but i actually undid that and i was trying to keep the outline around the eyes but i guess i deleted that so then all that work that i did was for nothing so that's what happens sometimes if you don't stay on track you end up doing stuff that you don't need to do and you might end up deleting it anyways now that we have one object that's easier to work with our rig i click the mesh shift click the rig press ctrl p to parent with automatic weights i'm moving up and down to see the movement you can see one of the eyes isn't following the spine layer so i think i deleted that rig and then deleted all those vertex groups from the previous rig and then back to the armature and generated a new rig 
ignore the meta rig naming convention because it's supposed to be rig click the mesh shift click the rig control p and parent with automatic weight and that still didn't work so now that's a new problem how can i fix the right eye so that it moves with the spine layer i was fairly new with working with rigify at the time but i probably didn't know how to fix it it looks like i just unhid all of the different layers and tried a different layer now the way to fix this would be to go into edit mode and select all the vertices for that eye and then assign it to a vertex group let's just say one of the spines and that would fix the issue but i probably didn't figure that out during the time when i was working on this character i think i was trying to add a bone for the eyes we don't really need to do that. I referred back to the first character, Ghost, to see how I actually did that. I just added a separate bone, went into pose mode, changed the rigor type type to super copy, and unchecked deformed. That's pretty much the eye bone. Aligned it into place, renamed it right eye, did the same thing for the left eye, selected the eye, shift selected the spine to keep the offset, added the eye as a new layer, put that on row three, moved it to the correct layer, and make sure to click that window button to make sure it's on the correct layer go into object mode and then generate the rig now i'm testing this rig to see if it works the issue is still there where the right eye or the left eye depending on how you're looking the character it's still a problem like i mentioned the way to fix it is just to assign those vertexes to one of the vertex group but i'm not sure if i figured that out maybe i did later on in the video i came across this issue plenty of time with my new characters and now i know how to fix that i'm not sure what i'm doing here I guess I was trying to figure out how to join different vertices to the object. I guess I do figure it out. I go to the vertex group, click spine, select the vertices that I want to assign to a group, and I click assign. I go back into object mode, select our rig, go into pose mode, and test out our solution. And I think I just assigned it to every different spine just to make sure it moves correctly. And in pose mode, select one of the bone layers and move it up and down. It looks like that worked. And that was the solution. Now we can create a goofy animation for this character <laughs> see the funny thing is if you draw on the texture which is directly on the mesh it already looks like his face is moving so it already looks kind of goofy and it creates this kind of like wacky interesting animation or it just by moving it around you don't really need to do much to make that character come alive now we can get into animation so animation i try to keep it as simple as possible just try to get the idea across depending on what movement you want for the character for this i think it was just like an idle animation that i wanted to do every character has that idle animation where it's still but it's just moving kind of like they're breathing in place so it all depends on how you visualize that in your head so i turn on on the record button i select one of the bones and press i to create a keyframe in the location and rotation at zero and at the 10th frame i just test the movement by moving it up and down to see what it would look like whether or not i like this before i apply the keyframe and i think i did at the 10th frame i moved it down by 0.05 and at the 20th frame i moved it up by 0 0.05 so that brings it back to zero 0 0.05 at the 30th frame to bring it up scrub through the timeline to make sure it looks correctly. Select all the keyframes and duplicate it to create a loop for the 40th, 50th, 60th, and 70th frame. Now it's kind of like what I was talking about, an idle animation. I organize everything by moving it into character 1.3 folder. I click the body, duplicate it so we can create the outline, add a second material, select our outline material, add the mass modifier, solidify modifier, check flip normals check even thickness change material inset offset to one increase the offset to one change the shell vertex group to outline and the mask vertex group to outline move the solidify modifier above the mass modifier and boom we have character 1.3 our pretty cool hershey's kiss face guy looking pretty awesome to export the fbx go to file export fbx select the previous character so that we don't have to type as much just replace the two with a three check selected object armature mesh change to z forward uncheck add leaf bones uncheck nla strip and export that pretty much finishes our flow process for blender and that concludes our video for character 1.3 where she's kiss with a face pretty interesting weird looking character i liked it i actually learned a lot from this video analyzing this video hopefully you guys did too there's a lot of good nuggets that i see from creating these videos i actually get a chance to remember all the mistakes that i made and how to fix them and how to improve and how to 
avoid them in the future. So it's good that I refer to these videos and make these voiceovers to improve my own process. If you want to see this character being used in a mechanic, go to the next video, which I'm going to be using character 1.3 in build blocks to create some sort of prototype similar to what I did with the previous characters. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button. It helps out. I appreciate it. I'm going to keep making more videos. I'm really digging my own process for this. See you in the next video. Peace out.